Hey fifth graders! I'm so excited to be doing the very first video and you can sit there and laugh if you want because I'm old and I'm going to do my best to do these on video. It's totally foreign to most of us teachers so pray for us because we're trying to get it all figured out and please be patient because this will probably change and change and change just like the situation has been changing but it's kind of cool because we're making history these this thing that's going on right now is huge it will make the history books and you guys will have children who will be reading and having to learn the facts about this historical event maybe really cool so look at it that way it's it's an exciting time it's an uncertain time but we know we have God don't we we always have God, praise the Lord. He has been so faithful to continue to encourage us here at school. And look, I'm in the classroom. I moved the camera so you could see, but since I'm old, I may never get it back where it is right now. So I'm going to just leave it where it is for now. <laughs> and we're going to get jump back into David's story, okay? And these Bible stories should go a lot faster since you guys are not here to interrupt me. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to try to pretend that you guys are all sitting there and just teach this. So pray, pray for us. Pray for me because we don't know exactly what all we're going to do. In fact, let's start this lesson with prayer. Dear Lord, please help us. Help us in our nation right now. Help those that are sick. Help those that are nervous. And I just pray that you would encourage us all because we know you. this is not a surprise to you, Lord. We know. You knew this was coming long before we did. And like we've talked about in Bible, you're already ahead of us on this. You're already at the end of this. You know the answer. And we just pray that you would encourage our hearts and help our fifth graders and our Sunrise kids and our Sunrise parents to just have faith during this time and to hold on to you like David did in the story that I'm getting ready to tell. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yeah. I mean, David was hiding out in caves, remember, afraid for his life, and the whole army was after him. We don't have it quite that bad, do we? No one is out to get us, right? In fact, our president and our governor and everyone are trying to keep us very safe, and that's why we have to do school this way, right? Just to be safe. <clears throat> so just keep praying. And now back to David. Did you watch the videos yesterday? On Monday, I had found for us some videos that were kind of cartoonish. Some of the facts were really, really good. Did you guys look it up in the Bible? I wrote on there that you could look it up in the Bible and see what facts were not quite accurate and how much of it was cartoonish and how much of it was real. But we've talked about that before, that the Bible doesn't tell us every single little thing that every single person does every day like we do. So sometimes when they make it, you make it into a cartoon, you have to, um, Fill in some extra facts of everyday things that you think people might have it might have been like. But anyway, so I just thought it'd be kind of a fun thing to do to watch those, and that should remind you a little bit of the story that we'd already been in. So before we left for spring break, remember David was about to be king, right? Saul had died, and Jonathan and his, his sons all died on the same day, and that's where the story left us. Okay, so let me go back to the story. Though God had promised David that he would one day be king over Israel, David did not seek to be king over Israel. After King Saul and his son Jonathan were killed in battle, the whole country of Israel was overrun by enemies, and the nation was in great confusion, just like us today, only a different type of of army, an army of germs that's coming after us. Well, this is an army of people that were overrun. Everyone was confused. David probably wanted to take his men and go right into battle against Israel's enemies, but he had learned, he was learning to wait on God's timing instead of taking matters into his own hands. Remember, that doesn't work out very well sometimes. He remembered his former mistake and the problems that resulted from his unwise action when he fled to the land of the Philistines, remember, and didn't wait on God. So instead of acting on impulse and doing what seemed logical, David asked God what he should do. Should I go to the land of Judah or should I stay back here in Ziklag? That was where the um, Amorite king had given their little city, remember? 
God told him that he should go ahead and go to the land of Judah, which is also Israel. David the inquired of, then inquired of God, asked God, as to what city in Judah he should move to. God told him to go to Hebron, a city in the southern part of Judah. David and his men quietly moved to the city of Hebron where their families, with their families and waited to see what God would do next. When the men of Judah heard that David had returned to Hebron, they came and they anointed him the next king. Do you remember is this what number of king this is? Do you know what number President Trump is? Now that I asked that, you should never ask a question you don't know the answer to. I think he's 45th. He's either 45th or 46th. What number would David be? He's not number one. Remember, Saul was the first king. Remember, they pushed. They wanted a king in their country. Saul pushed. Or Saul was it. And now David is just the second king that, that they've had. Um, so they came. The, the men of Hebron came and anointed him their king. Since David was from the tribe of Judah, Judah felt a kinship with him. David reigned over the tribe of Judah for seven years and six months. He didn't try to run ahead of God by trying to take over the leadership of the other tribes of Israel, but he continued to wait patiently for God's timing. As he was waiting for God's timing, he was learning to be patient, and we need to learn that too. David wrote, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, this is a good verse for us, and he shall strengthen your heart. David learned that it is always wise to wait on God. Do you get in a hurry sometimes and not want to wait? I do. You guys, we've talked about that a lot. I, I get that way. Um, that's easy to do, but God wants us to learn to wait on him. He already knows the answer to our problems. So wait and pray and ask him, his help to guide us. Since Abner had been the king general, excuse me, Abner had been the general for King Saul's army for many years. When King Saul died, Abner decided that Ishbosheth. Saul's son should be the next king of Israel. Remember, usually it is passed down to the sons. Of course, it was not his decision. It was not Abner's decision to make, um, for, make, for that was God's decision. Abner set about to help Ishbosheth, that was Saul's son, one that didn't die in that battle, to help Ishbosheth set up his reign as king of, of the east side of the Jordan River. So, Ishbosheth reigned over all the tribes of Israel except Judah, while David reigned over the tribe of Judah. Remember, we had that map. I don't have it right now, but that map that showed how they broke down the territory of Israel, and each tribe got their own spot. And so, David was in just one spot in Judah at this point, and Ishbosheth over the rest of it. But Abner wanted Ishbosheth to rule over all of Israel. He wasn't happy with just the one. Even the tribe of Judah wanted to take it completely away from David. So he brought some of his warriors across the Jordan River to Gibeon, a place north of Hebron, and there Abner battled with the tribe of Judah. But David's men, led by Joab, were much stronger than Abner's men, and after a severe defeat, Abner's men finally gave up and fled. As Abner said, as Abner and his men fled from battle, and this is a funny story, Asahel, a brother to Joab and Abishai, who were, was very light-footed, he was known to be a really good runner like that, whatever that guy's name is, it's, it does the fastest hunter dash, sorry, I can't think of his name at the moment, of course, crazy, huh, that I don't know a name, that's amazing, isn't it, yes, I never can remember names, you know, it's a good thing you guys aren't here, ha, I don't have to try to remember your names. Okay, so this guy was known to be a really fast runner. He was a brother to Joab and Abishai, who were very light-footed and known as one of the swiftest runners in the land. Starting running after Abner, determined to kill Abner, who was a menace to his king David. Abner's the one that was trying to get Saul's son to be the king. When Abner saw, you see them running, that Azahel was following him, he yelled to Azahel, Stop chasing me! Abner knew that he could easily kill Azahel, but he didn't want to get into trouble with Joab, Azahel's brother. But Azahel wouldn't stop chasing Abner, though Abner warned him several times, Stop! Stop chasing me! Therefore, Abner killed Azahel with his spear. When Joab and his brother Abishai saw that Abner had killed their brother, 
Azahel, they were more determined than ever to defeat Abner. Joab and his men pursued Abner and his army until the sun went down. In the fading daylight, Abner and his troops stood on top of a hill and called to the men chasing them. When are you going to command your troops to stop pursuing their own Israelite brothers? They all shouldn't be fighting, should they, against each other. They were all the tribes of Israel now. With that, Joab realized how wrong it was for the Israelites to be fighting each other. Sometimes we don't see clearly, do we? He blew a trumpet and commanded his soldiers to stop, give up the pursuit. Joab's army then went back to Hebron while Abner returned with his troops to Manaheim. Nothing had really been solved by this battle except that many of God's people had been killed. Of these, 360 were Abner's men and 20 were Joab's men, including Joab's brother Asahel, the fast runner. There was a long war between David and the descendants of Saul, but David became stronger and stronger and the house of Saul grew weaker and weaker. Abner, Saul's general, who had who made Ishbosheth king, eventually became very angry with Ishbosheth. He remembered that God had promised David that he was going to be the next king. He knew he should have just let it be. The more Abner thought about it, the more he realized that he was on the losing side. He decided he would desert Ishbosheth and join with David. What a great guy, huh? First, he sent messengers to David to offer his help in bringing all the tribes of Israel under David's rule. He also went to the elders of Israel and encouraged them to make David their king, reminding them that David had delivered the people from the Philistines and that the Lord had said that David should be the next king. Then Abner took 20 men with him and visited David in Hebron. David treated Abner royally. Now, I don't think I would have treated him royally, would you? He was trying to take over the kingdom and push David out. See why David was a man got a man after God's own heart because instead of being vengeful and bitter and angry he greeted him and he was kind to him and even gave him the royal treatment that means it was very kind to him and he made a feast for him cooked him a huge like Thanksgiving feast and his men and Abner offered to bring all of Israel under David's leadership here they are talking to David David now is sitting on the throne. After David had made an agreement with Abner, David sent Abner away as his friend and ally now. At last, God's promise to David would be fulfilled. As soon as Abner and his men left David, Joab was just returning. That's David's uh, general. Joab had just returned from that battle, didn't know all this was going on. When Joab heard that Abner had visited David and that David had sent him home as an ally, Joab now becomes furious. What? Why would you allow this guy to just come in? He, he betrayed you. So Joab said, David, what have you done? Well, he wouldn't have said David probably because he's the king. King, what have you done? Why did you let Abner get away? Surely you know why he came. He was probably spying on you. He's only pretending to be your friend. The real truth was Joab desired vengeance on Abner for killing his brother Asahel. I know that's I know that's what he's up to. Leaving the king's presence, Joab acted swiftly to stop Abner from getting away. And without telling King David what he was going to do, Joab sent messengers to overtake Abner and bring him back to Hebron. Boy, lots of people are just taking matters in their own hands, aren't they? When Abner arrived back in Hebron, he was totally unsuspecting and unprepared for what was about to happen, Joab took him aside by the city gate, pretending what he, that he wanted to speak to him. Shh, come here. Let me talk to you. And as usual, I lost my place. Hold on. Um, just come on over here. I want to talk to you. With a quick thrust of his sword, Joab struck Abner in the side, killing him instantly. When King David heard that Joab had killed Abner, he was greatly distressed. David prayed that God would not blame him. It wasn't David's fault. Although usually when something happens in a country and you're in charge of the country, a lot of times people blame the leader. But this wasn't David. David tried. David tried to accept this guy back, but his general would have nothing for it of it. David prayed that God wouldn't blame David or his kingdom for Abner's death, but that he would let Joab suffer for the murder that he had committed. It was really this guy's fault. 
David commanded his people to tear their clothes. Remember, we talked about this before. They would tear their clothes, dress in sackcloth to mourn the death of Abner. That's what they did back then. All the people followed King David's example, did what he, he said to do, plus King David did it with them. That's a good, good way to be a leader but, and be a good example as a leader. Um, and they all joined in mourning for Abner's death. David refused to eat. Here's a good picture. Kind of an idea of what sackcloth on your head would look like. David's example in... Um, the people, David refused to eat any food that day until the sun went down. The people noticed this and it pleased them. They were glad that their king was righteous and not bloodthirsty. They knew by this that David certainly had not planned Abner's death. David himself followed the coffin in which, the, which lay the body of the powerful general Abner. And David lamented, that means he cried very hard and was very sad over Abner's death, even though Abner had been David's enemy for years. Ishbosheth was tragically murdered by his own men, and the Israelites were without a leader now. The elders of Israel came to Hebron and officially asked David to be their king, saying, Even when Saul was king, you were the one who brought victory to Israel, and the Lord promised that you would be the captain over his people. King David made an agreement with the elders of the tribes of Israel, and they anointed all of them now, all of the tribes of Israel, anointed him as their king. This was the third time that David was anointed. Do you remember the first? Who anointed him first? Speak up. Can't hear you. <laughs> it was Sam. Good job. I heard you. That's right. That Allie or Casey that's always talking. No, I'm kidding. They're not. Well, <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, it was Samuel. Samuel anointed him, remember? Samuel, Eli, Samuel, the boy in the bed, remember that said, speak, God, speak for your servant listens. And his mom that prayed for him, remember him? And he became old, and he was the prophet, and he was the one that anointed Saul to begin with, God told him to. And now then he anointed David, and then he anointed the, we'll see, the guys from Judah anointed him, and now all of Israel is anointing him for the third time. David, let's see, Samuel anointed David king. I just said that. Let's go over that. Though David had waited a long time for this to happen, he knew that God had kept his promise. David was now the king of Israel as God had promised. David reigned over Israel for 40 years. Seven years, sorry, 40 years, seven years and six months in Judah, and then 33 years over all of Israel and Judah. David conquered the city of Jerusalem for the Je from the Jebusites and made it the capital of Israel. When its central with its central location, it made an ideal capital. David built up the city, fortified it, as well as made it beautiful. David became Israel's greatest king ever. The secret of his success was that God was with him and blessed him mightily. Remember, David was a man after God's own Heart, right? And that's what we would all love to be. One of the greatest characteristics of his life was that he never tried to take revenge. Remember that one time he almost did and Abigail stopped him and then he ended up Nabal, remember? Nabal died and Abner be, or Abigail became his wife. She stopped him. Other than that, he learned. God will take care of your personal enemies and he found that God always did. But in God's own time and in his own way. And God wants us to do the same. He said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. Leave revenge to God. Let him take care of your enemies. You focus on just you and God and what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to react. As David learned to wait on God's timing, so we need to learn to do that also. Patience is no fun. But we, God, God says we need to be. That's why it's so hard for us because it's not... We, we want our own way all the time, and our sin nature keeps us from wanting to be patient. We need to let God take care of our enemies that we might have. When we try to get back at people on our own who don't like us, we do wrong and sin against God. Remember, you're only accountable for your actions, not what others do to you. If someone does something to you and then you do something back, now you're guilty. So you have to make sure that you control this person right here. You can't control anybody else. 
You can only control your reaction, which is really hard. That's why we need God's help every day. And we need to learn these really good character traits from the Bible, from the stories, from David and Samuel and Moses and all those things that, they, that, that, that pleased God so that we can be what, like David was, a man after God's own heart. I just, oh, I pray that someday I will, that God could say that of me and that God could say that of you. So it's your choice. You can choose God. You can choose yourself. If you choose God, he's going to take care of you and reward you for being patient. Let's pray. Lord, please help our kids, help our families. Thank you for showing us how to trust you. And we thank you that you have everything, all of this entire world in control. And all we have to do is wait on you, have patience, pray and trust you. And I pray that you would help us to do that. We need your help. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.